All right, we're taking a look at solving a system of equations using the elimination method today. We're at problems 656 and 57. In 656, they present this system of equations to us. We notice we have two equations with two variables each, but these two equations are not solved for one of the variables. We need it solved for one of the variables to use the substitution method or to use the equal values method. So in 56, they want you to recognize, and don't write this down, I'm doing it in red, don't write it down, but they want you to recognize that in order to solve this, I would have to start by getting y alone, subtracting 5x from each side, giving me negative 3y equals negative 5x plus 16, and then we divide by negative three on both sides. All right, we get y equals 5 thirds x minus 16 thirds. And that's a nasty equation to work with. It's got fractions. They want you to do the same thing with this equation and then put them together to solve. That's a long process. We saw that the other day. That is not necessarily the way we want to go. All right, so that's what 56 is all about. So nothing to write down for 56, except we don't want to go that way. So what I want you to do right now is take notes. This is on 57, all right? And what they ask you to do is to draw a line underneath our two equations. So write the two equations down to start. Make sure they're lined up, especially the equal signs. We want our equal signs lined up. And they want us to add these two equations together. And watch what happens when we do. Well, if I add 3y plus negative 3y, I get 0y's. All right? If I add 2x plus 5x, I get 7x. And negative 2 plus uh, 16 gives me 14. And really, this 0y we don't need. That's gone. It got eliminated, hence the elimination method. And now we're left with one equation that says 7x equals 14. Well, I can solve that by dividing by 7 on both sides to see that x equals 2. And that is the solution for x. Adding these two together allowed us to eliminate one of the variables because they were the exact opposite. All right, that's what the elimination method does. It eliminates one of the variables that's the exact opposite, allowing us to solve with what's remaining to get our first variable. We are allowed to do this because essentially we are adding an equal amount to both sides. Both of these sides are equal, all right? Because we're told in the very beginning that negative three y plus five x equals 16. So when I add equal amounts to both sides, I am still applying the addition property of equality to both sides. Why? That's why I'm allowed to do it. All right. So now once I've done that, I want to go ahead and I want to take one of my equations and solve for y. So I know that 3y plus 2x, and instead of x, I'm going to put in my value of x, which I found, equals negative 2. This is a little bit more tedious to solve than some of the other methods, but we can still do it, giving us 3y plus 4 equals negative 2. And then we can subtract 4 from each side, finding that 3y equals negative 6. Divide by 3 on both sides to find that y equals negative 2. All right, so I know now that y is equal to negative 2. I'm going to make my negative 2 a little nicer. And I want to check my answer, just like we did before. If I used one equation to find y, I'm going to use the other equation to check it. So negative 3 times negative 2 plus 5 times 2. Does it indeed equal 16? Well, 6 plus 10? Well, yeah, that does equal 16. That means that my answer is correct. How do I write my answer? Well, as usual, x comma y in parentheses, and we can box that out. All right, let's take a look at the next example. Take a look here as we look at the elimination method in problem 659. Take a moment to go ahead and write down that problem. Notice in this one here, we, if we were to add these two together right now, if I were to just draw my line underneath of them and add them together, I'd get 2x plus 2x is 4x. I'd get 7y plus 3y is 10y. And I'd get 5 plus 13 is 18. No variable eliminated here. That's a problem. This is called the elimination method for a reason. So I've got to come back and rethink this one. This one's a little bit different. And you're actually going to see most elimination method problems come like this. In order to eliminate what worked so well last time was that we had two terms, two like terms, that were the exact opposite. In this case here, I could pick either one to get to be the exact opposite, but I see that 2x and 2x are the same exact term. 
with the same exact coefficient. So if I were to just take the bottom equation and multiply it by negative one, that two x would become a negative two x. That would also mean my three y would become a negative three y and my five would become a negative five and that's okay. My top, I'm not gonna do anything to it. I'm just gonna bring that one over. It's two x plus seven y equals 13. And now when I line up my equal signs and I add these two together, now my x's over here will eliminate. 2x plus negative 2x, they are zero x's, and so they eliminate altogether. Three, uh, 7y minus 3y gives me 4y, and 13 minus 5 gives me 8. And I can solve that for y by dividing by 4 on both sides to find that y equals 2 in this case. Well, hey, ironically, it's 2, just like the last one. But notice, I had to do something first to make the terms eliminate. I had to multiply one of the equations by a negative one here in order to make two of the like terms the exact opposite. That's the key in the elimination method. And we'll learn more about this in the next lesson. All right, but for right now we found y. So as usual, now we go back and we find our x. So I can pick either equation. I'll just pick this equation right here, the original. So 2x plus 3 times y, which is 2, equals 5, and solve that for x. Going through the steps in order to solve that gives you me. And I find that when I divide by 2, I get x equals negative 1 half. All right, so now I've got x and I've got y. I want to check it to make sure that it's right. I'll do my check down here. And if I used this equation right here, all right, to, uh, to solve for x, I wanna use the other equation down here to check it. I always use both equations. So to check it, I'm gonna go two times negative one half plus seven times two equals 13. And I find two times negative one half is negative one, seven times two is positive 14. And if I combine those, I get negative 13 equals, sorry, positive 13 equals positive 13 shows my answer is correct, and I can write it always x first, negative half comma y. All right, and that is my intersection point for these two lines. That's the solution to the systems of equations. This is part one of this lesson. Uh, part two you can watch in the next video where we'll learn how to deal with problems where it's not as simple as multiplying by a negative one. Sometimes we have to multiply it by a different number, and sometimes you have to multiply both equations by two different numbers in order to eliminate one variable.